have babies in this state now and in the future who need the legislature to speak on their behalf, to give voice to the voiceless. And so I want to ask you, encourage you, and invite you tonight to join me in supporting House Bill 16, showing the rest of the country, states like Virginia and New York and Washington, D.C., that we're going to continue to stand for life in this state, to create a culture of life. And in this instance, where a baby is born alive, breathing, moving, crying, longing for, and reaching out for help, there should be no question as to what that physician should do. Members, thank you for your time tonight. Very proud to stand here with my colleagues in supporting the Texas Born Alive Infant Protection Act, House Bill 16. And Mr. Speaker, I move passage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. It's important that the record reflect the truth about House Bill 16 and why many members refused to engage in debating this blatantly false, inflammatory, and dangerous bill. The aim of HB 16 is clear. Further stigmatize abortion, misinform the public, intimidate physicians, and interfere with a woman's ability to seek medical care. And even worse, it adds another layer of trauma to families facing the tragedy <coughs> of severe <coughs> <abortion> <coughs> HB 16 does absolutely nothing to improve health care. The medical community is overwhelmingly opposed to this bill, including the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, which stated, quote, the bill relies on non-scientific information. The idea that many women deliver a viable fetus after an abortion attempt is not accurate, end quote. And that's from physicians, not politicians. There have been zero reported instances of any child born alive after an abortion in Texas. Current law already treats any child born prematurely or after an abortion the same. There is no ambiguity or confusion here. To debate this bill or to try to amend it would legitimize its false narrative. The misinformation perpetuated by this bill is dangerous and is the exact type of rhetoric that leads to threats of violence against providers. We refuse to waste the limited time that we have here to take care of the people's business by entertaining malicious and purely political attacks against women and doctors. We refuse to ignore the expertise of medical professionals and allow them to be targeted and harassed. We refuse to use the power entrusted in us by our constituents and the voters of Texas for political theater or to be party to turning lies into law. As a nurse, I'm insulted. I am insulted by the implication that I or any other nurse or doctor, Stephanie Click, Dr. Zerwas, Dr. Sheffield, Dr. Bonin, Dr. Oliverson would not do any and everything in our power to provide care to any medically stressed human being. As a mother and a grandmother, I am heartbroken for those families who will suffer as a result of this punitive bill. And as a legislator, let me just say that not a single one of us in this room not one supports infanticide. Not one of us. I am casting my vote as present, not voting, and asking others to join me in protest of this harmful charade. So go ahead and check off the box on your scorecard at the expense of Texas women and families, and then let's get back to taking care of the real business we were sent here to work on. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> That's, I'm in my fourth term here in the House, and I don't know if I've ever been accused of intentionally misinforming, seeking to intimidate, to add a layer of trauma, to incite threats of violence. I don't think I've ever been accused of filing 
malicious and purely political legislation. But I've been accused of that, and so I want to respond. This legislation is about protecting innocent life, a baby who is born alive. I don't want to go point by point and refute such ridiculous allegations. And so members, what I want to do right now is I want to introduce you to someone who's in the gallery with us today, Ms. Claire Colwell, who is a survivor of abortion. Ms. Colwell is here in the gallery, and so if you vote against this bill or if you vote present not voting, I respect your right to disagree. And I would never accuse you by way of your vote of being malicious or wanting to incite violence or to engage in a charade. I would never accuse you of that. Your vote is your vote and your bills are your bills. But make no mistake, this body has an opportunity tonight to unite and to say that in this situation, in this instance where a baby, an attempted abortion has failed and a baby is alive outside of the womb, we're advising and telling and putting a stake in the ground as to what that physician should do. I don't think that's a charade. I think that's why we're here. And so Claire Colwell and others who testified before our committee that day sharing their stories, those ladies sharing their stories of surviving an abortion and advocating across the country today for laws just like this. They deserve your yes vote today. They deserve your yes vote. I'm encouraging you, I'm inviting you to join me in voting yes, in giving a voice to the voiceless. That's a good vote. It's a great vote and it's a great bill. And I am so proud to join with my colleagues to pass this legislation. And I'm hopeful that the 49 other states will join us very quickly. Members, thank you for your time. I move passage. Being 93 ayes, one nay, and 50 present not voting, House Bill 16 passes to engrossment.